Hi, Julie Usher, I'm back. This time I've got a video for you that's slightly out of my norm. I'm not cookie decorating, I'm not cake decorating, I'm actually doing a product test. I was very fortunate to receive some new, not yet fully released natural food colors from a company named True Color. And they asked me to put them to the test. These are their first generation colors. They've since already sent me a second generation, which I'm gonna test probably once, as soon as this video is over. Now, these natural food colors, are made from all vegetable and fruit extracts. So I've got a purple grape sitting in front of me. That's what it's called. It's actually made, made from purple grape extract. The beauty of that is they're much more healthy for us than typical artificial food coloring. So I'm really excited to try this new product. I am going to be referring to my notes a lot in this video because I want to do justice to the company that gave me the, these products. And I did do, oh, I'd say, three or four days of solid testing of these colors in royal icing, and I wanna make sure I don't miss anything. So that's what these notes are for. I actually tested these products compared to other brands, another brand of natural food coloring and the artificial food coloring that I use most often, which is Chef Master, along six dimensions. Ease of mixing, intensity of color, range of colors, so like how many do they offer, or how many can you achieve through mixing them, setting and stability, long-term storage and price. And the price will be sort of tentative because these products are not yet out, the true color, and they're still fine tuning the pricing. So I'm gonna take these one by one. First of all, ease of mixing, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the natural food colors that are already on the market and the artificial ones. Typically the artificial one that I use, Chef Master, it comes in liquid form already. So I just drop it out, you've seen me do this, squeeze it into my royal icing, and I can count drops and create color formulas. The other uh, most commonly available natural food color is India Tree. It too comes in liquid form. The issue that's been the case with a lot of natural food coloring products to date is that they don't color very intensely, certainly not as intensely as artificial food colorings. And as soon as this is opened, I need to stick it in the refrigerator because it's perishable and it has a limited shelf life. So that's where True Color comes in. They claim to solve both of these problems by creating colors that color more intensely, and they also come in a powdered form, so I can dole out what I need and hydrate, add water to just the portion that I want, so I'm not mixing up a bunt that has the possibility of going bad. It too will become perishable once it's hydrated, but I have more control over the amount I mix up and use at any one point in time. So let's see if that plays out in reality, and we're gonna talk about ease of mixing first, as I said. Obviously, Chef Master and India Tree don't need to be mixed, but, but True Color does. So there's a slight disadvantage in my mind to that because there's a convenience factor. That's not, you know, mixing, mixing it into the color state I want. It's just an added step, but hopefully it'll be pretty straightforward. Now, their containers, when I got them, said to hydrate the whole container. This was about a four gram container with water, and that would be the right consistency, but I didn't know how much was in this container and I didn't want to hydrate the whole amount and then have a bunch sitting around if I didn't need to use it because then that introduces the same problem with other natural food coloring. So I wanted to create for you guys a formula that I think um, created a nice viscosity of coloring, one that was relatively droppable. And I found, right now I'm working with their purple grape, that with this particular color, if I take about a quarter teaspoon of the powder, I'm mixing in a small plastic cup, and about a quarter teaspoon of water, they recommend distilled water because if there are any impurities in your tap water, if it's not exactly pH neutral, it can affect the color. My tap water actually behaves really nicely with this product, but I am working with distilled water. I found that a ratio of about uh, one quarter teaspoon of the powder to one quarter teaspoon of water, which is about 20 drops of water or 20 drops of color once it's hydrated, creates a nice dropping consistency with the purple grape easy to control, but I don't have a lot. So unlike my Chef Master, my India tree, it's gonna be hard to get this in a little dropper bottle to drop it out. I'll have to use an eyedropper or just drop it off the teaspoon. Nice consistency for that. That said, let me put that to the side. That said, not all of their colors mix to that consistency in the same ratio I discovered, which creates a mixing nuance. This is their fuchsia gel. And again, I'm working with their gel colors. Let me clarify that. They have a whole line for airbrushing and some shine colors. We're working with those that are intended to go into buttercream or royal icing, and we'll be working with them strictly in royal icing today. They do behave differently in different products. 
So this is their fuchsia gel. That's what it looks like. It was a little clumpier. There's some big chunks that I had to break up, but I mixed that into coloring yesterday. It's droppable too, but not nearly as fluid as the purple. That's at the same ratio of a quarter teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon. Their yellow, by contrast, is very gloppy. It sucks up that water almost immediately. So this is a quarter teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon. This is what it looked like yesterday. As soon as I mixed it, it looks the same way today. It's almost dried out. It's really not useful that way. So to that, I have to add easily, let's just do it, another a teaspoon is about 20 drops. A quarter teaspoon is about 20 drops. Okay, so I just added 10 more drops of water to that quarter teaspoon of powder. And it's now something I can pick up on a spoon, but it's very gloppy. I can't drop it. So I'm going to add another, another 10. And this is distilled water as well. And it's just sucking it up. So I only point this out to say that the mixing is different for every color. I ended up adding close to, now I've got about a half a teaspoon of water in there. I added close to about a teaspoon of water in the last run here to get it of equivalent consistency to the purple grape. Stored overnight in the fridge. They retain, as long as they're covered airtight with plastic wrap and maybe foil, they retain their original dropping consistency pretty well. So, okay, that's it on mixing. Mixing A, it's relative to the stuff that already comes mixed. It's a bit of an inconvenience, especially when the colors don't mix quite the same way. But a good rule of thumb is to start with a one-to-one -one ratio, particularly in the red and pink families, and then add more water until you get a dropping consistency for yellow and some of the other pink families. Now we're gonna to turn to the next item that I tested, which was the intensity of color. I just wanna compare the closest equivalence of color. So I'm comparing a Chef Master Violet, the blue that comes from India Tree. The India Tree only sells three colors, so blue is the closest I can get. And I'm gonna use the purple grape that I just mixed, which should be, we'll see what color it is. You might be surprised. One thing to note on my royal icing, I've measured out the exact same amount. It's about 3.9, four ounces in each of these cups. And I'm going to try to put a drop into each, and we'll see how it colors up. Now, mind you, even if I use an eyedropper, no two drops are ever equivalent. So this is going to be approximate, but it's as close as I could get. And I just want to see if they color with the same range of intensity. My royal icing is two pounds of powdered sugar to five large egg whites. I have not put any cream of tartar in it. Cream of tartar is an acid, and cream of tartar will affect the color of natural food colorings. So it's best to start with a royal icing that's free of cream of tartar or any form of acid. So that means if you're working with meringue powder, which typically is dehydrated whites, cornstarch, cream of tartar, and citric acid, you're gonna get a different result than what I'm showing you here. And your best bet in working with a true color color is if you want them to show up without any effect of acid, kind of true to their original intent, is to mix a royal icing that's pure egg white, and you can get pasteurized egg whites and, and uh, royal icing, and you'll see the results that I'm about to show you. I'm gonna see if I can drop this with a little eyedropper. Before I was just, I was just running it off my spoon. So I've got 3.9 ounces in here, one drop of the true color purple grape, and we'll give it a whirl. This is a pretty thick icing. But you'll see it starts out looking very purple, like rich grape. But as you blend it into my royal icing, it turns this incredible Wedgwood blue color, which I love. And much to my surprise, as much as you hear that natural food colorings don't color intensely, this is to me pretty intense with one drop in, in four ounces of icing, which is about a half a cup. A little bit goes quite a long way, at least in this family. So that's the true color. We'll just put them on white and compare them one to one. I don't even have all the color blended in too. Really nice. So I've got here my Chef Master. Just wanna shake this a little bit. I'm gonna to try to get one drop in to the same amount of icing. Again, it's hard. This is a little more viscous, so my drop may not be a drop, but this is as close as we can get. 
And this colors violet as you would expect is pretty true to the the nozzle there. But I'd, I'd say it's no more intense than that beautiful blue I just created. So good news is the true color scores high in this color family in terms of color intensity so far. Let's see how it stacks up to the other natural food coloring that I happen to have here today and one of the most dominant ones on the market, at least the one that I can find. And this is the India tree. One drop of blue, same amount of icing. Got these really gargantuan spoons, but it'll do the trick. And it starts out looking very blue, but as I stir, it quickly dissipates. Look how pale that is. Hard to believe, but this is what the complaint has been with natural food coloring. You have to use a ton to get any kind of richness of color. True Color, Chef Master Artificial, and India Tree with the same number of drops. Let's talk next about range of colors and in particular the effect of acidity on the natural colors because it will be affected by cream of tartar, lemon juice, anything that's acidic that you add to it. Here again is my true color, purple grape, which looks more like a Wedgwood blue. Okay, so I've got some fresh squeezed lemon juice here. Putting a quarter teaspoon into that that blue and it turns it from blue to violet and if I keep adding it it'll turn it even more violet which is kind of cool I actually see this as a benefit because once you can control the acidity of your product you can get a much broader range of colors with this natural color than you can certainly with the India tree, India tree natural colors I'm going to add a, another quarter teaspoon and just show you how that changes the color it turns it from Lavender to a little more pink and you can continue in that spectrum all the way up to very bright pink So does that happen with artificial color? What's your guess? Okay, I, I know you guys are all answering me out there But no, that's one of the best I guess some people see it as a benefit of artificial color is it's completely stable So if I have lemon juice in it It's not going to change it. See it's just it's exact same color as it was before I don't know. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. I kind of like the fact that I've got a lot of agility with that true color just by controlling the acidity. So what does the India tree do when I add lemon juice to it? That's their blue, mind you. It has some paling effect. It's starting to turn it kind of a gray color. So it too is affected by acidity but it doesn't seem quite as dramatically. That may just be because it started off a fainter hue to begin with and it's less noticeable. So I've got that also demonstrated on one of the color palettes here. This is the same color family. Just mixed straight up with one drop and 3.9 ounces or 3.8 ounces of icing. Here it is with the lemon juice, India tree, blue with one drop. Here it is with a little lemon juice lightened up. True color, one drop purple grape with a quarter teaspoon lemon juice turns to an obvious lavender but still much more intensity with the true color than with the India tree, which I think is what's most remarkable. Before we talk about color mixing, just doing, doing a basic color mixing example with the natural colors, I just want to recap what I said about range and intensity of color. Now, uh, so far in the first generation, True Color has given me five, five natural food colors as compared to the three from India Tree. So already the range there is better. Um, so that's a good plus, better relative to the other natural food colors out there. Though I would say artificial colors, there's a much broader range. You can get them in almost any color of the rainbow. So 
uh, still some room to move there for all of natural colors. So we saw earlier that acidity certainly affects the range of color, and that's true of all of the true color and natural food colors range of color. So that means it has some implications when you're color mixing. And I just want to demonstrate that with this simple test here. Here I've got the true color yellow gel coloring in here. I had to add at least 20 drops of color to get it to the same shade as this blue, which is one drop of the purple grape. And my underlying icing has no cream of tartar in it, no acid yet. Okay, so my yellow starts out kind of a golden yellow with no acid in it. And you'll recall my purple grape starts out a blue. You would think by combining those two, you would get a green. And such is the case when there's no underlying acid involved. Just mix those together to demonstrate. It's kind of a nice pale, oh, I don't know what you'd call it. It's a beautiful green though. So such is the case when there's no underlying acid involved. But this is where the color wheel can go wacky on you if you forget and you have acid in your icing. And I want to demonstrate that here. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice in the yellow, quarter teaspoon. Just kind of an arbitrary amount, actually. Now you won't see a dramatic change, but this will go from kind of more of a golden yellow to a lemon yellow. Another pretty color. This demonstrates the range of these colors. I think it's actually pretty fantastic. So just you, pardon the finger, we're not eating this. So you can see how with a quarter teaspoon lemon, golden yellow to kind of this lemon yellow. But just looking at these colors, if you were to pick these up off the counter, you would still think yellow and blue together would make green, right? Well, let's see. So we're gonna take a piece of the, about a spoon of the lemon yellow and a spoon of the blue. Stir them together. And lo and behold, you're not really getting a green, you're getting more of a khaki color. So uh, just to, again, another reason for just really controlling the acidity in your icing when you're working with the natural food colorings. And just so you can see that more clearly, I'll, I'll paint the swatch of it here. So that's the end result. It's more of a, it's hard to see perhaps on camera, but it's, I'd say it's less green and more khaki, certainly differently. Not necessarily what you'd expect coming out of those two colors. You'd expect kind of a bright green. Well, it's not that at all. Let's just recap the first three dimensions. Ease of mixing, I give the true color product maybe a slight negative relative to the natural um, colors and artificial colors because A, you got to mix it, and then <laughs> B, it doesn't mix the same way for each color. But I would certainly overlook that for the virtues of having a natural color over an artificial color any day. Intensity of color, I give the true color product, you know, real thumbs up in the purple family, which is the purple carrot and the purple grape. They color as intensely, if not more intensely than the artificial colors. The, they are certainly um, much better than the other natural color that I tested that's out on the market in terms of its intensity in general. Um, though the yellows and pinks that I tested could stand a ramping up of intensity. This is all in royal icing. Mind you, these will mix differently in buttercream, apparently much more intensely in buttercream. I have yet to test them there. Range of colors. I give the true color a thumbs up. I really love the ability to play with the acidity of it and come up with a totally different set of colors than I ever would have imagined. So that to me is a big boon. Now let's move on to those other th three characteristics. I don't really have icing to show here, so I'm just going to refer to my notes. Setting and stability. This is what happened after I painted swatches of colors out on these cardboards or painted on cookies because I also iced on actual gingerbread. In all cases, there was no real evident color change or modeling of the true color or the artificial colors. I just did an artificial versus true color comparison in that case. They all set pretty true to the color as they were swiped on their palettes, which you can see here. No real modeling of the Chef Master Violet. This has now been days drying. The same true of the true color purple. So I feel like they're on par on that dimension. 
With regard to long-term storage, this doesn't really um, apply so much to the artificial food colorings because these have an infinite shelf life practically. Actually, I don't know what it is, but it's quite long, a year or more. So yeah, it, there's a, a bit of a downside here, again, with the natural colors because once they're mixed, they have to be refrigerated or frozen if you're not going to use them in the next day or two. So a little bit of a downside there, but one that I'm willing to overlook for the benefits of a healthier product. I will say, though, the freezing had virtually no impact on the consistency of the color once mixed. This true color that I had brought out earlier was actually frozen and then I just thawed it overnight in the fridge and it's the same dropping consistency that it was initially. I had it frozen for three to four weeks and when I mixed it into royal icing, I, see, I think some of these swatches here are actually the frozen color. It seemed to color identically and it seemed to set with the same sort of stability. So I have great confidence in the ability to freeze this and use it later if you've overmixed and you have more than you need. So that's, that's good news. Then lastly, on price. And again, True Color said their prices are still to be determined, but I'm putting on my glasses for this because I don't want to misquote anything. Their prices are not yet final, but they're expecting a four gram container of powder to retail about for about $3.40. So that's the equivalent of $3.40 for about eight hydrated grams if you hydrate in that one to one ratio of a quarter teaspoon powder to a quarter teaspoon of water. If you have to hydrate more, that's more hydrated grams. But let's just assume the one to one ratio for now. So uh, Chef Master, by contrast, is about the same price. It's about oh, $2.95 to $3.40, depending on where you get it, for a 2.3 ounce or 65 gram container. So true color, if you on a hydrated gram basis is about 43 cents per hydrated gram, where Chef Master is about five cents per hydrated gram. And the India tree runs somewhere right down in the middle of the two. So it sounds like, geez, wow, the true color is nine times more expensive than the Chef Master. But I just want to put that into a little perspective for all of you. As it turns out, based on my calculations, about 10 hydrated grams of the true color color could color close to 720 cookies. <laughs> it's quite a lot. And I'm talking about the blue color now, which is highly concentrated. So conservatively, even though it seems like it's eight to nine times more expensive, it is on a per gram basis, that would still only cost you about a penny a cookie for the color that goes into a cookie. So again, I think that's a small trade-off to make for a much healthier product than one that you'd feel more comfortable giving to your kids, family, and friends. So that's the conclusion of my first test. You'll be seeing a graphic running here shortly that shows you the comparison across all six dimensions. I'll also have that available as a PDF so that you can download it. I'm looking forward really to seeing what the next generation of colors does. That's, that's the upshot of it. I like what I saw in terms of color intensity. I'm willing to overlook the, the mixing um, issues and inconvenience for a better product. So till then, live sweetly.